to my channel. Today I have a very special treat for you. I have guest Kevin Everly sharing his opinions as well as my opinions on the Rieger cane. Now, this is great because I know that there are more than uh, just my ideas on reed making and reed styles. And Kevin is in a completely different climate than I am here in Alabama. For example, I'm in a very humid, closer to sea level area, whereas he is in Las Vegas, so he is in a very dry, higher altitude climate. So both of us have slightly different styles of reeds. He is also looking for a wider style reed, whereas I do a little bit more of a narrow style reed based on our different instruments. So rather than just take you through just my opinions of the reeds, we have decided to do a collab video for you. Okay, let's dig in. We both purchased Rieger Cane from Midwest Musical Imports. We purchased a bit of the gouge shaped and profiled for $4.75 a piece and also the gouged cane for $3.10. Okay, let's take it to Kevin so he can tell you about his experiences with the gouged cane. Hey everybody, it's me Kevin. Um, I just wanted to do a quick little video here to tag onto my friend Aaron's video um, about the Rieger cane. Now, I totally stole her idea and hopped onto the bandwagon and did some cane trials myself this summer, and we decided to collaborate on the Rieger. So, I bought two kinds of Rieger. I bought Rieger Gouge and then Rieger GSP, both from Midwest Musical Imports. Interesting thing about the Rieger for me is that since I'm in Las Vegas and it's a lot drier and a lot higher in elevation, we're a little over 2,000 feet above sea level, is everything I'd heard about the Rieger, that it's really consistent, that it's really hard, and that it's, you know, very stable, um, kind of went overboard here. Uh, so first, the gouged Rieger that I used, um, when I ran it through my profiler, uh, which is an MD profiler, um, and then put it through my Fox 3 Shaper, it was okay. Um, I didn't have any cracking at all with it, which I was very excited about. Um, I did have cracking with some of the other cane that I tried this summer. But the thing about it was, because we're so high up and because we're so dry, my reeds have to be a lot thinner. So my heart measurement um, is usually somewhere between 52 and 48, so that I get kind of a nice buzz on it and I get a nice core to the sound. If it's any thicker than that, then we just can't blow through it at all and no moisture stays in the reed whatsoever. So I found that when trying to get down that low in the heart, and then the tip has to be even, you know, I think my tips are somewhere between 16 and 20 um, on the micro in the micrometer. It really made for a reed that hardened all the time. It hardened up all the time. With the Donzi cane or Gonzalez cane, um, which I use Gonzalez pretty much all the time, um, it will stabilize for a while, being that thin. But the Rieger just kind of wanted to keep expanding um, even after I had profiled it down um, with my profiler. So out of five reads that I made on the gouged uh, cane only, uh, two of them worked successfully. Uh, the other three just kept stiffening, kept stiffening, kept stiffening, and then I would end up eating some off of the tip when I had to get it down lower. My experiences with the gouged cane were a little bit different than Kevin. I noticed in my cane a bit of warping, what I like to call teeter-tottering. This means that when I set the cane flat, there is one edge that is higher than the other side. It was more extreme in some pieces and less extreme in others. It also made it a bit more of a challenge to fit it into the profiling machine because it did not want to sit flat. For this reason, I did end up throwing out two of the three pieces of cane where the teeter-tottering was just too much. What was fun for me buying the gouge shaped and profiled is that I didn't have to test it. I was able to order the Rieger 1A shape because I was ordering Rieger cane. Um, so I knew exactly what shape I was getting prior to purchasing. The gouge shaped and profiled cane also didn't have a really strong fold over line. Um, and as I would fold the cane over, it did feel like the cane was stretching or pulling. Those fibers were just, um, they weren't as pliable as I thought they might have been. The overall gouge comes in at about 1.3 on the micrometer. 
And the all-important heart measurement for me on a read length that was about 55 millimeters came in anywhere from about 74 to 76. For me, this is thick enough that there is plenty of room to take it down and teach uh, scraping the tip of the read. It also allows for a little bit of sanding to remove some of those pithy fibers and also even hand gouge the inside of it if you're interested in hand gouging. I, like Kevin, was very pleased to see that this cane was not prone to cracking. If I did have any cracking, it stopped way before the first wire and did not go into the blades. The overall sound of this was that it was dark and woodsy in the pianissimo range, um, as long as I broke the reeds in for a long amount of time. In the louder, more forte, it did have a tendency that I could go bright if I so chose to. Um, this does allow for a lot of projection, um, but it just doesn't have that warmth and woodsiness to it. Um, in some ways, it reminded me a little bit of the Glotan that it could cut if I really wanted it to. Um, that, that projection of that core of the sound. Um, but again, that's only when I was going for the Forte or the Fortissimo passages. Um, now, the GSP, interestingly enough, I got four consistent reads out of five um, with them, but I did notice I had to take more out of the back um, on that profile than I did on my MD profile. Playing-wise, like I said, the ones that I processed myself... Um, hardened up immediately, so I could only really play them every other day. The GSP that I got from MMI was great, but the reads themselves only lasted about five days before just totally crapping out, which not, not a, you know, not a big deal. Um, a week on a read in this climate is, you know, pretty good. I don't, I don't know if uh, gouging myself, if maybe a thicker gouge would work uh, for me up here, um, I tend to find that a thicker tube in this elevation with a thinner reed sort of compensates and balances it out, um, whereas sometimes a thinner tube but a thicker blade uh, in lower elevations, when I used to play in Los Angeles a lot, balanced it out, and now I'm finding the opposite is true here. On my 601, anyway, um, I found that for the thinness of my reeds, the Rieger just didn't hold up the way that I had hoped it would. And it didn't hold up in the same way that the Gonzales cane and the Donzi cane um, does in this elevation. So if you live in a high in a high place, um, shout out to the peeps in Denver. <laughs> um, uh, if you live in a, in a dry climate, um, someplace, I mean, there's like zero humidity except for last week when it was really disgusting. A very dry, very high place. Um, try it. See what happens for you. Maybe with your mouth style and your vocal bassoon combination, it might work. But for me, on my 601 with my Heckle 1 vocal, the the thinness that I had to get in order for to get response and projection in this climate, the rigor just just didn't didn't hold up the way that I had hoped it would. But try it yourself and see what happens. And should leave Erin a comment because I'm gonna check her blog like all the time. So thanks for letting me join in. Uh, talk to you later. Some of my suggestions for this cane. If you own your own shaper tip, do take the time to just buy the gouged and profiled if you're interested, but shape it on your own. I say this because there's a little bit of a spine in it and some of the pieces of the gouged, shaped and profiled that I purchased did not have the spine running down the center. So it is worth the 75 cent cost difference to um, save that money and shape that cane on your own. I would also take a second and look for that teeter-tottering because that does mean that there is warping. And if there is warping, it can throw your tip opening off. Um, those pieces that are warped, I ended up just discarding because I knew that they would not make a good read with a centered tip opening. And if you're like me and you have a tendency to be on the brighter side, go ahead and do a little bit of sanding on the inner side of the tip. I show this in my How to Darken a Bassoon Read, the first video, which is just finishing techniques. Uh, putting a little bit of sandpaper inside that tip and pulling it out will help darken the read up. 
Okay guys, I hope you like having more than one perspective on the cane reviews, especially because they are two drastically different styles of reads um, and two different experiences from different locations and climates. If you are interested in learning more about Kevin, I will link all of his information, his webpage um, in the description box down below. So uh, go ahead and give him some love. Um, it's fun to always have another idea and another guest on the channel. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up on all of the events happening at my read desk, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter. I am still trying to get into Snapchat. I, I think I need a tutorial on that. Um, so if you guys really want to help me with that and send me some snap messages, that'd be awesome. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Okay. so. Let's dig in. I purchased a cobalt case. Uh, the cobalt case is great because it offers the backpack function, but also the ability to carry it like it's a briefcase. It has two large packets on the outside that you can store things in. And then also on the inside, it has two main uh, compartments right next to the bassoon to store things. Okay, taking a risk with the purple lipstick. And this video is either gonna be really good or really bad with it. I don't, I don't know, but I was feeling risky today, a little living on the edge.